Hey everybody, welcome to Between the Sheets. I'm Gay and Bruno, your host. We're on the first and third Friday of every month here on the United Broadcasting Network at 7 p.m. Pacific. Oh wow, um, call us. I'm telling you, I always prepare for this. I've said this probably 145 times and I still just don't have the rhythm down. 323-524-2599. 323-524-2599. Please call us. We love to hear what you have to say or just, you know, if you're lonely or bored, um, call us. Uh, we will not be doing any readings or tarot cards tonight, Mara. Mara's putting, I'm telling Mara, we can't do it tonight because we've got too much and too many wonderful ladies here on the panel tonight. I'll go around the room. Oh, follow me on Instagram, QTE Brat, and the Facebook page, Between the Sheets Podcast, and the YouTube channel. Um, let's go around the table. Do, 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 do. I'll go to Ronnie. Hi, I'm Ronnie. I'm a fitness after 50s coach and... I'm turning 56 years old in five days. Whoa. No way. No way. No way. And, no way. and That's then the wrinkles, but I got a great ass. Oh, anyway. yeah. <laughs> and then we have Mara Shane. Hello. It's great to be here. That's all you have to say? Uh, <laughs> she's got I'm a great ass, too. I'm saving it up. I'm saving it. Yeah, we all have you. great thank asses. You. I'm saving um, it up for later. And then all the way um, on Zoomlandia, we have... Durga McBroom, who's been away for a while. Hello, Dergs. What's you? What you been up to? Oh, you have to unmute yourself, sweetheart. Remember, unmute, unmute, unmute. Sorry. It's I okay. It's okay. Uh, still, still on my weight loss journey. I'm now 17 pounds from my goal, which means I've lost 43 pounds. Yeah, Ooh, girl, that's great. That's and a... I'll be going back to Italy uh, on August 7th. Well, uh, New York first, and then uh, August 13th, I'll be back in La Bella Roma. But are you going to stay permanently, or this is just for a while? Well, I'll, I'll be back here uh, in February, but I'm, I'm based there for the most part, yeah. Awesome. Well, we'll miss you, but you can still call in like you did before at 4 o'clock in the morning, or whatever the hell time it was. <laughs> <laughs> Um, also another regular that's been with us a while. Um, our, our friend, um, medium Cheryl Murphy, Cheryl, I see you all over the internet now. Fabulous. Yeah, Thank you guys. I'm doing so many readings right now, you know, mediumship psychic, cause we're all hopefully going to get back out there in person soon. But yeah, for now you can just find me on my website, medium Cheryl, and then on live Facebook and all of that. So thank you. And then we have another spiritual person on the line, another clairvoyant, medium, astrologer, whatever. She pretty much does it all as well. Amadeus, all the way from SB. Her little butt was going to be, and I say little butt because she does have a little butt. <laughs> it's a nice little butt, but nonetheless, it's a little <laughs> butt. Um, she's all, she's, uh, she was supposed to come in the studio, but maybe next time. She's really yes. trying, but she's busy. So what's been going on, my friend? Yes, next time. Uh, like Cheryl said, a lot of readings and things and stuff going on. Yes, I'm a medium clairvoyant and also a singer-songwriter uh, Yay. producer. Person. I was just going to add that. Um, and then we have our guest. Um, I've known this woman, I don't know, like I've only really been out, in, not that I've been out in the community, but I've been out for years, but I've been um, back in the community probably in 2019. Um, I went out with full force uh, to sort of uh, restart the show and start promoting it. And um, I met her a few times. But my favorite, my favorite Mara story is Mar Hobbs, by the way, musician. Um, she's just, she's a, a jack of all, Jill, excuse me, a Jill of all trades. Um, my favorite uh, recollection is we were at Eve Reynolds' party out and... Um, Mar needed a, uh, needed to catch an Uber, but it was it was from wherever Eve's lived, and um, I said, "Oh no, I'll drive." She goes, "Can you drive me halfway? Where do you live? I'll drive you to Burbank." So I drove her, and it was like such an intense conversation, which if you talk to, if you know Mar, it's very intense, and it was so refreshing and enlightening that it wasn't so sort of stupid and superficial. So I thought, you know, she's this girl. She's one of my tribe. She's one of my people. She's not scared to sort of talk and dig deep and be vulnerable. And, you know, and, and we barely knew each other. But what we shared in that, whatever, 20-minute, 30-minute ride home really um, impacted me and really said, this woman's solid. And, um, you know, through COVID, we yeah. checked in on each other. And 
you know, we both were taking care of our moms, and you know, her mom recently passed away during COVID. Sorry about that. So sorry. But um, but we've um, we've been off and on, and even though you know, you they say people, you don't have to talk every day to someone to to feel a, a friendship or feel a kinship or feel an energy. It just is, mm -hmm. and that's how I feel with everybody on this show, Amadeus and you, Mar. So thank you for joining us here tonight, and thank you and for I'm so me. happy that you're here. Yeah, this is awesome. It's my first time. Ever? Ever. No, you've been interviewed before. I've been I've been interviewed before. I mean, yeah. you were on a record label at some point, I, right? You know, yeah. I you did that whole thing. thing. I Yeah, we, we did the whole thing. I'm sure you know all about the whole thing, right, Amadeus? We've talked about it a lot. <laughs> the whole thing. Yeah. The whole thing's caning me right uh, now. Yeah. <laughs> I know about the whole thing, too. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Durga, I mean, Durga, because Mar probably doesn't know, and probably Amadeus, just briefly... Tell them who you are. Oh, um, well, I started touring with Pink Floyd in 1987. Uh, I'm on the last four albums uh, and did all the last tours. And then from that, I springboarded into my own band called Blue Pearl, which had some number one dance hits. And one of my songs uh jumped over to the pop charts in the uk and was number two all over europe number four in the uk and uh yeah and and here you are <laughs> <laughs> and here we are yeah, here we are That's i mean awesome. i know i love when i mean i love when i have a whole bunch of people from the music business uh, on it because my heart is always in the music i mean i met durga backstage at a concert through someone that I was managing. And it was just some, um, so music is the great, I believe music is the great communicator as well yeah. as the great connector. Mm -hmm. So uh, Ronnie, I know you're chomping at the bit. Let's see what Ronnie has to say. Cause I know she's, when she chomps, she chomps. So let's hear. <laughs> oh, I have nothing. I do want to say, I'm really sorry about your mom. I lost oh. my mother in 2016 and it still sucks. It's, it's, it's bittersweet. Yeah. yeah. It's weird. It is really weird, you know? isn't it? Yeah. Uh, what is your mother's name? Her name is, was Amalia. Amalia, that's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just really sorry. My heart goes oh, out to you. Thank you so much. Yeah. And okay, this this is really off the topic, but um, I was talking to this lady who is, and she lives in San Diego, and she is a um, cosmetic procedure consultant. She started 18, you know, selling cosmetics, and then she worked um, with medical doctors and surgical centers, and and so she knows all about plastic surgery and cosmetic procedures. And I was shocked to find out. I mean, just shocked. Because we were going through all that. What's D-Sport? What's this? What's Juvederm? What's all that? We were just talking about it. And um, she, and I said, what, what is the biggest thing right now? I expect It's always going between boobs and butt. Mm -hmm. Sorry. But um, which what's the big thing right now? Because for a while, people were getting butt implants. Mm -hmm. That's weird. Uh, really? Yeah. Was that a oh. is that a thing? It's a white girl. It thing. was for a while after that. I would have to it's say. A, I, I didn't really want to go no, there, but you I can know. say it. I can say it because I'm I was white. Leave that one alone. I'm a white so. girl, so I can say it was a white yeah. girl thing. Yeah. So now I'm like, because a, a lot of surgery and cosmetic procedures is up since COVID because people had downtime. They could do it at home and have all the lasers and the chemical peels, and nobody would see them. Um, okay, this is kind of sensitive. I hope I can say it. The number one thing right now. Our labia, labia, sorry, labia um, enhancements. Okay. What do you what? mean? That's what, what I said. I'm like, what do they do? What, what exactly do they enhance? How big do they want them? <laughs> or how <laughs> small? <laughs> maybe, maybe small. Tight, really small. stretching, looking nice. And I'm like, after 50? And she's like, no, the bigger, I, there's a huge number of girls in their 20s. They just want them beautiful and perfect and they waddle out of there. And I'm like, are you serious? So, um, wait a minute. What are, are we talking plumping here? I don't know what plumping it's is. A, a, plumping. It's it's plumping. labial plumping. Oh, is that, stretching, is that plumping. What it is? I, I don't look know. better. It's... I have no idea. Look, and labia like... piercing freaks me out. I couldn't even imagine like right? pumping it, plumping it. No. Yeah. Sean, are you loving our? our, our... <laughs> I mean, we're here. Oh, okay. it's my favorite. Yeah, I figured. He's like the little brother in the but, room. But but Durga, remember Nicole? Didn't she have that surgery that makes it tight? Oh gosh. Yeah, yeah I forgot what they call yeah. that. Rejuvenation? That yeah. That. Well, a twenty-year-old. I mean, but you know, look. Twenty. Oh, oh, and, and, and the twenty-year-olds are getting Botox. I'm like, I never even would have thought about it in my twenties, but they want to prevent the lines. You know what? No. To be honest, I mean, I worked in the entertainment for a long time, and and I mean, I'm not outing her, but 
um, you know, Valerie you Bertinelli is mm-hmm. not that much older than me. Mm-hmm. And she's 61. Right. And I'm 50. Yeah. I'm going to be 58. So mm-hmm. she's not that much older okay. than me. So yeah. we were, I was working with her and she was very, um, she was getting like minor tweaks on her face at such a young age. Mm. And I always thought, you know, I thought that was odd because she was, to me, she was still flawless because I'm looking at her. I'm flawless. She's only a few years old. She's flawless. But I mean, the key to plastic surgery, Botox and all that other stuff. And, and this is what the town, this is what the actors say, is you do start it young. Yeah. Because hmm. as you Had start it young, you know, it's, you know, look, look, I've got these 11s. If I would have started these <laughs> 11s a long time ago, I wouldn't be battling them now. Now I just don't give a shit for right now. But I have these moments where I go up and down to huh. sort of get rid of them. But I don't, I think I could say I will never, ever, ever, ever do plastic surgery. No, I won't. Unless I'm going to. The only thing I will do when Medicare pays for it, so I've got some time, <laughs> mm-hmm. is the eye lifts. Mm-hmm. Because I know you because, can't see. Because yeah. I'm thinking it's not gonna it's I'm gonna have a problem with yeah. that. But other than that, not so much. I mean a friend of mine just had a boob labia reduction. Thing, huh? No labia thing, no, no. <laughs> but a friend of mine just had boob reduction and um you know, and you know, I mean she was always big, but I, I you know, we, I never asked her, but now that she had the surgery, she's a C cup. You know who she oh, is. Oh, that's nice. Mm. Oh, yes, I do. And <laughs> um, you know who she is. Yeah. And, but she, I said, well, what bra, I mean, I finally asked her, what bra size were you? And she was in a part of the alphabet double oh, my that God. I did not know that they made bras that size. Era. Right. Oh, the, you mean she got a reduction. A reduction. Yeah, yeah a reduction. Oh. Because it was so painful. And I haven't seen her yet. I'm going to see her next week. But she said... Oh. First of all, it's a relief. Yeah. And B, so many people who have seen her have said, God, you look like you lost so much weight. Yeah. Because because she was yeah. just always very she wasn't fat. If you mm-hmm. looked at her, she wasn't fat, but she was oh she looked always very big. Yeah. So I'm looking Amazing. forward to seeing her. <laughs> huh? I said it moves your shirt out. It's like yeah. it's such a you know, I know, but you know but I'm I mean, gonna get something done for you sure. Are? What are you yeah. gonna get done, Mara? Um, I am going for consultation at the end of August, actually. For what? Eye bags removals. Mm-hmm. I have huge <laughs> bags. Okay. Really? Huge. No, <laughs> I, I seriously, see, this is really good lighting no. right now. Yeah. But you should see like how bad they are. They're terrible. You know, I say so. get fillers. Get anything that makes you feel good. As as long as it makes you feel good. And the reason I was talking to this this girlfriend of mine is because I have so many clients now. You know, I'm a fitness coach, who are doing the. I'm not going to name the brand names because I don't want to advertise for them. But they're two competitors where you go and it moves your muscles like twenty thousand times, it's like doing twenty thousand sit ups or twenty thousand um, whatever for your butt. That's fine. It can it can. It can strengthen your muscles temporarily for like six weeks, but it's not going to make you lose fat or burn fat. But I wanted to know the, the skinny on it, so to speak. And she's like, it's great to, to incentivize somebody to really start training their own muscles. It, it's for somebody who doesn't have that much body fat in front of their abs, but they want to show off the six-pack abs. But ultimately, you have to keep training yourself or keep getting this, this thing that costs 3000 or $4,000 every time. Well, this tonal machine what? looks pretty good. That same friend of ours just bought a tonal, mm. and it looks pretty cool. Yeah, what does that cool. do? It's this like computer thing. Um, it's like a computer oh. thing. It's not the Mira, but it's a computer it's thing. A screen on the wall. <clears throat> it's a screen on the wall, and it adjusts the weights and stuff. And I thought that's pretty cool. It you mean does like all the it... work for you? Yeah, who cares? It's long... <laughs> who cares? Yeah, it's but a... you still can't overeat, and yeah. you still have to work out let to me, keep it up. Me... Yes, Durga. Because I've been on this journey uh, since February, I mean, first of all, I've got like a little bit of powder on, and that's it. I've been drinking three liters of water a day, Mm -hmm. every day. My skin is like flawless. That's true. So much can be fixed Mm -hmm. by doing it from the inside. Mm -hmm. I've been doing green smoothies. I've been taking a lot of supplements and nutraceuticals and things like that. And I can see the difference in my face. I look younger because I'm taking care of my body. And yeah, working out too. That makes a huge difference. I've I've lost all this weight and I've started working out again more um, consistently because I need to tone. I'm not against anybody taking shortcuts, but the fact is, um, who is it? Courtney Cox said she had a really good friend look at her one day and go, oh, my God, 
because she didn't realize she went overboard. It yeah. It creeps up when you're doing it and doing it yep. and doing it and then you cross that line and you don't realize you've done too much. Yeah. I can always tell when a woman's had an eye job because that sparkle just leaves. Oh. It just there's something that just leaves when what, you stretch What kind too of an much. eye job? You mean like this like Meg Ryan was just, it was so oh beautiful. She got an eye job, and I could okay. tell right away. Renee Zellweger. Yeah. Well, let's go down the list. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. They just lose that spark. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, do you think this has more to do with the fact that women are always put in this position? Yeah. And especially if you work in the entertainment industry, this isn't really something that men. Um, are, are having to deal with unless they're in the entertainment you know and um, well not really not as much no, you, you know, know what though mark no i deal with women I, who live in the valley who live in west hills no no but what i'm saying but 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 not just entertainment but i just think in the entertainment business i think it's definitely there, there's more pressure but i think in in general women you know that is that is something that that i i women in a lot of ways are sort of put upon in that way you know you don't really necessarily see men going out of their way i mean yeah you you see a little bit more of that now with men but it's not necessarily yeah. something that you you see with with dudes i'm you know it's yeah it's it's you know it's it's who we are and what we're supposed to de be you know i mean we're supposed to be there for the gaze of somebody else you know um oh the male gaze yeah any you're any any gaze any you know gaze I, but your own i i just you know i you know i kind of um i understand i mean i i think at the end of the day it's just sort of i mean at least for me you know i can't speak for other folks but i i as as i'm getting older i think it's important for me to feel comfortable in my skin mm -hmm. and and uh you know sort of take care of my you're gonna get old Yep. you know <laughs> it happens that's just you yeah. know that's that's just life um but i i think yeah. it's how you age i mean i don't you know i don't hey listen i don't fault anybody for wanting to you know have cosmetic surgery or do botox i mean like yeah. you said it's it's like you know it's really does this make you feel good and at mm -hmm. the end of the day if it makes you feel good then i say do it but um you know it's not necessarily yeah. something i see guys talking yeah. about right a whole lot you know <laughs> Or I'm gonna um, there's different ways to have value. I think males go through some of that in entertainment, you know, but there are different ways. You know, your brain can be this or the, you're the funny guy or this, but the second a woman loses weight, I mean, I lived in West Hollywood, as you know, Mark, for a long time, and I remember seeing a billboard not too long ago, maybe 2016, like saying something like, you're on your game as you get smaller and smaller. Uh, it was a woman. Uh, you know? It's <laughs> just... Hollywood. It's just a huge billboard. Yeah, you know? it's just you know it, it's 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 that's hope, it's, um, that's coming. Oh, sorry, I was just gonna say that that is actually kind of be, becoming more acceptable now to not be skinny. Um, I can't believe it, but it is coming. No, it should. It yeah. should never even have been an issue. It shouldn't have ever that's been right. an issue. You know, you have to be comfortable yeah. in your. You have to just celebrate people for who they are, for who you are, and not just fit into a certain category. But I'm doing the switch. I'm doing a switch. Now. Okay, switch. Um, Mar. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so more yeah. so yeah. how did you get into the business how did you discover let's go it's all about more right now is it all, it's all about me <laughs> i don't have friends i have satellites right <laughs> um but um i uh you know i started playing at a you know i guess i started playing when i was about 16 seriously always the guitar uh yeah you know i actually started playing drums Oh, and cool. uh, you know the reason why I didn't get a set of drums was because it was <laughs> too loud, and so yeah. my mom got me a guitar instead. <laughs> so, um, but um, I've always, you know, I've always played music. I've, you know, I was sort of had 15 minutes of fame. I was in a well-known local band called Strange Fruit back in the day. We were kind of big in Lamert Park, and you know, we um, we did all of that. And again, you know, we had the. Uh, the record deal and it all sort of fell apart and you know I, I've you know I've been blessed I've played with you know Macy Gray and Billy Childs and Freddie Hubbard and you know um, so you know I've played in different bands I'm kind of currently working right now with my friend my my best friend um, Patsy and uh, we do a lot of stuff right Patsy now Moore. The, yeah Patsy Moore and uh, we co-write a lot of stuff together right now, and we've sort of been co-writing partners, you know, for a while now. Um, Let's. But you brought some MP3s. I did. Of you and Patsy's collaboration. Yeah. yeah. So which one would you like Sean to play? Um. You know what? You can play. This is not my home. Or I don't know. You know what? Let me, I changed my mind. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm having a Libra moment right now. <laughs> you know. 
Um, you know what? What's um, the oh, o- October fifteenth. Um, when when is it? Sixteenth. Oh, girl! Oh, wow. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, actually, you know what? You can play Second Chances because it's a it's a nice song. Awesome. And it's a pretty song. Thank you. And it takes me back. And it, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Maybe right. one day you'll play one of my songs. Well, I was just going to say. Oh, ready to go. Hey, everybody. Sorry about that. Um, Mars' song was very powerful. So um, the whole freaking thing crashed. <laughs> um, so we're going to start that song again because it's absolutely hey, gorgeous. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Um, Mars song was- oh, that was me. I'm hearing myself <laughs> on my thing because I didn't know what happened. Okay, we're back up. Echo. Okay, we're good now? Okay, we're going to play this song again. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, for the interruption.
Is this on over? Hey, everybody, can you hear me? Yes. I know you can hear me, but can people out there hear me? I can't, you know, captions are auto gen. Yeah, okay, now we're back up. Okay, so something's going on, um, Sean, with uh, the sound, uh, with the music. So we got to figure that out because she's a musician and we need to hear the music. But, um, but you know what? We're going to play that song again. Not right now. Yeah. Not right now. <laughs> Maybe some other time. No, later <laughs> on in the show. show. Later on in the show. But since we have her live, because I don't, I, I, I know that'll work for right now. Yeah. Will that work? I, that will work. Let, yeah. I want Mar to play. So Mar, what are you going to play for us? Well, Tell us. I'm, I'm. Down, throw down. Right, right. Listen to Mars' song if it inspires you. If it inspire, and if it doesn't inspire you, then that's good too, you know? But if you have a title, I'll, uh, between the sheets mail at gmail.com, and then I will forward that stuff to Mar.
are players. I just totally am. Um, so what style genre, I mean, do you put yourself into a style, a specific style or genre or uh, you, you don't, you think it's too limiting? Um, You know, and sit there until you come up with the tune or is that just not flowing with the you know the muse and the um the flow of, of you know creating music it depends
metal where like metal underneath the strings like a drobo yeah a dobro i think that's one i like that one like like yeah it's got like a big metal um yeah like a metal like thing. a circular metal plate yeah 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 All it's right. it's um yeah how about like those acoustic guitars that like were back in my mom used to have one you know like the thick wooden acoustic guitars you still it's a, it's do a you thick wooden guitar yeah okay <laughs> i didn't know there was a term <laughs> yeah. no that's yeah i saw um, on tv on a youtube thing this guy i forget how much it cost but some ridiculous amount maybe you know um had a glass guitar have you seen that glass i've seen a, a glass see guitar you know well they've got glass guitars glass dildos you yeah, know what does the glass do to the sound <laughs> nothing uh, I'm, I'm i'm sure I'm, i don't you know i've never played a glass guitar before i'm, I'm sure it sounds interesting yeah that's but I'd like to ask this sister over here what yeah. it was like playing and singing uh, with David Gilmore playing right? guitar because he's like one of my favorite players. He's on mute. You're Are on, you on mute. mute. Durga, you're on mute. Still muting. All right. Okay. Yeah, David is... Actually, I think for one thing, um, people sort of underestimate his vocal ability because he's such an amazing guitarist. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I I have done shows where we had been, you know, gigging for weeks on end, and still I'd look over some nights and be like, damn, Dave, what are you playing? Because he, like, sometimes really would um, exceed himself, and you could see him, like, look really pleased. But um, <laughs> singing with uh we did some solo shows in 2002, I want to say, in London and Paris. And in London, um, they did Comfortably Numb with all these special guest stars like Kate Bush and Robert Wyatt and Bob Geldof. And then in Paris, he asked me to do the doctor's part. And he was filming in, in London, uh, but they wanted to save money so they didn't film it in Paris and he told me later he was really upset with himself that he hadn't because he liked the way I did the duet with him better than anyone so oh, that was wow good. wow that's nice <laughs> that's lovely but I'm gonna say there was one song in particular we did this song by um oh god uh it's in French and it's uh je, je crois entendre encore uh oh it's I'm I'm blanking on who it's by. It's not Delib and it's not Debussy. Is uh, it Lachma? Anyway, it's a French composer, okay. and uh, he had to hit these really high, clear notes, and he would just nail it with this bell-like tone that was so lovely. Yeah. So. No, his tone is is really beautiful, and um, you know, because you were talking about his singing voice, and I remember that first solo album he did back in the early '80s. I forget the name of it. Um, and um, I, I thought I thought his vocal work was was actually great. You know, yeah, I, I would agree yeah. with you that he is underestimated as a as a vocalist, no doubt. Yeah. Yes, and he can also get that really gravelly rock tone, like on Dogs of War. Right. Dogs of War. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. He, he's got a really really varied range, and the cool thing. For me, is that uh, in terms of range, now I sing a lot of leads now, and I tour with a lot of Pink Floyd tribute bands, and I'm singing lead as a woman. I have a very similar range to David, so it works out quite well. Cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. <laughs> so how did uh, Amadeus and Moore, how did you guys meet? Ooh. <laughs> I remember. Do you remember? <laughs> okay, I'll let you tell the story then. Um some uh, softball thing i wasn't playing in some after party softball thing and it was jackie a uh -huh. mutual friend who That's said funny. there's a girl that plays guitar you have all your guitars because yes i have a lot of guitars and <laughs> you need to meet <laughs> do you remember that i, I can't do. remember actually i do remember it was you're right it was after a a one of the baseball and uh, so unusual that i was there yeah. or yeah but i yeah. instantaneously i love this woman just to the world at large mars an incredible musician and guitarist wow. and um uh just the world needs to hear her more Thank i work you. i've worked with a lot of people as i'm sure you have durga and mar really rocks it and uh let alone your you have such a fine mind in a way with language 
love. So, oh. and mm-hmm. and with that, let's play that song for the fourth time. Let's play it for the fourth time. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Let's try it again. Yeah. You got it. Yep. I know you got this one, man. <laughs> That is a beautiful, beautiful song. And, and Patsy's vocals, it's just so haunting. It's just really a beautiful song. I'm glad we finally got to hear it yeah, straight I'm glad through. glad the ladies got to hear the whole thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, anybody want to call in and speak to Mar? 323-524-2599. Or any of us. 323-524-2599. Mara had one question, and then we're going to change the topic again. <laughs> Uh, was I, was it about the performing? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I just wanted to ask you what you prefer. Do you prefer to be playing in front of a live audience a lot? Or do you like just more a quaint one-on-one or just jamming on your own in your own privacy? I think it's, it's all different. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and as I've gotten older, um, it's sort of changed because, um, when I was younger, it was very ego driven and I was like, oh. I want to look good yeah and I'm play and i'm gonna shred and i'm gonna do all this stuff and, <laughs> and uh you know things you do when when you're young but um i've you know i've sort of had to turn it around just for myself and it's really about what is it that i'm giving to people at the end of the day it's it's really not about me and and i remember it was years ago and it was this old guy and he schooled me you know because i i you know i went and i started playing and i was kind of you know high and uh it was a shitty show i mean i was okay but you know i kind of fucked up and he took me to the side and he goes that was really disrespectful you know you you disrespected your audience and it wasn't cool and what was he was he he like the club manager no no he was he was he was an old guy you know it was it was you know years ago and he was he was an old jazz performer great pianist um incredible and uh, somebody who I learned a lot from, and and uh, he, you know, that told sounds me, like out of a movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, mm-hmm. yeah. and sort of, and it sort of changed. But you know, especially the the past 
you know, few years, I've, I, I really sort of try to make it a situation where it's like, what is it that I'm giving to somebody else as opposed to really sort of making it about. So it's me. a connection. I think so. And, you know, the thing is, is that because I'm not so wrapped up and so self-absorbed, I actually play better mm -hmm. to be honest with you, <laughs> because I'm so outside of myself That's that, so good. you know, yeah. that, that you don't, um, because, you know, listen, you're giving to the audience. They're, they're there. And I'm sure everybody here who's a musician, um, and who's a performer knows that, you know, and get you can get really way, caught up. Right? Huh? Yeah. You get I mean, out of your way. You do right? get out of your way, you know, and, and you do get caught up. A lot mm -hmm. of times, and um, it's really not about that. Okay, At least I Amadeus try not to be about that. And Durga and, and Limar, um, do you guys ever go to SoundCloud or any of those just to listen to people who are? I, I want to say amateur, but that's probably the wrong word. They're just not in the business yet, but they're composing and putting together mm -hmm. music at home. And it's just incredible. Do you guys ever just go on those? Yeah, listen, platforms yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of you know, listen, I, I. Soundtrack. Try to listen. The thing about nowadays is that anybody can can make music. You know, I mean, to think that Billie Eilish and her brother Phineas made that album, <laughs> that first, and they're in their bedroom. Mm -hmm. Right. And you know, right. whether you, whether you like Billie Eilish or not, the fact that it's impeccable, impeccably produced, to say you know, to say the least, even if you don't like her music. But um, they did that in a bedroom with a laptop. Right. Amazing. And right. so there's a lot of ways for people to make music and there's a lot of great stuff out there. All you have to do is go on YouTube, right. you know, or TikTok or any of these platforms and, and, and young. And I've seen some great, great talent. I mean, so you guys have been impressed. There's mm -hmm. yeah, there really is. You know, there's, there's everything. You know? Yeah. I think it's really hard women, uh, you, know, you know, Mar, I don't know about you, Durga, but I, I got into this with a studio, home studio early on, and uh, there was no way to show my music to people, you know, there was no way, <laughs> if I talked to a 22 year old, they're like, where's your stuff, you know, it's like I couldn't bounce it, or I'd buy things for, you know, 10 grand to try to bounce, uh, you know, something to show it, Right. and <clears throat> big powers uh, that B would say, <clears throat> little girl we won't let you have a compressor or you know whatever it might be um something you use in sound <laughs> and now somebody can take this device i mean i have no you know it's amazing so yeah. there's so much music all over the place so much expression yeah and um, um yeah go ahead <laughs> no one of the guys i work with a lot dave kersner um works for a company called ik multimedia mm -hmm. and oh. they make all the peripheral stuff you need to you can record an entire album on yep. your iphone wow yeah. uh, and i know who have and it sounds fabulous yep. see but th that's like there's a good side to that and a bad side to that the good yes. side to that <laughs> right. is that anyone can get out their creativity uh and people who are really really talented are making music and they're not at the mercy of you know, paying hundreds of dollars an hour or whatever to work in some studio. The bad side is that everybody. Right, right. <laughs> right. And, and yeah. some people should not be making music and yeah. they don't know that they suck. <laughs> and the is, um, I, I get a lot of people that want to send me stuff in my DMs and like, oh, I'm sorry, this is I'll a stop. song I make. <laughs> Listen to me playing along with somebody on the television, and it's like, okay. Uh. <laughs> and and I mean, that's the thing about social media is it's great in that you can really reach out to a lot of people, but it can sometimes breed this really bizarre sense of familiarity with people. I had this one guy, God rest his soul, he's sadly no longer with us. This one guy. Uh, was obsessed with me and he would like send me i'd wake up in there in my inbox to be a photograph of pancakes and he'd go <laughs> look Dara, i made you pancakes for breakfast and i'm like uh it's a photograph and i'm all the way across the country and then one day he's like durga i miss you where are you and i'm like i'm in the internet which is the <laughs> only place you have ever <laughs> talked to me. Um, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, he, he um, it's really 
bad, really. I mean, he actually once he, he finally like said, "I want to be your sex slave," and that's when I had to be like, "Look, no, no, stop, Ixnay, no, this is not happening. You need to chill." But he um, was a diabetic, and he went into a diabetic coma while he was driving and was killed. Oh shit! Oh, that's that's so sad. So hmm. even though I know it's so sad, and so even though he was kind of weird and kind of a pest. I think of him fondly because he all he did was show me love, but I, it, it was that weird kind of inappropriate <laughs> internet love. But he meant it. <laughs> no, no, I mean but, you know, we can go on, you know, into now let's transition um, into love, <laughs> love, into love, love, love. Oh, um, no. Yeah, oh, and how I'm not getting it. I am not getting any. <laughs> but but you know what? Hey, look, here's the thing. I mean, you know, we talk about love. I mean, you. Know, Look, I love a lot of people. I do. I think, you know, I'm not in love with anybody. Um, I don't even know, you know, eventually I guess I'll figure out what the difference is. But I think love is a baseline. And I think we all sort of, I, I, I mean, I'm not telling people what to do. But I think if we could just like have love as a baseline, you know, we would be able to treat people kinder, more empathetically, just more compassionately. Um, and I keep saying this, you know, and look, I falter. Sometimes I'm like driving and go, you motherfucking bitch. You know what I mean? <laughs> there ain't no love there. Okay. <laughs> no love there. But, um, I have my moments, but for the most part, I think, I, I think I try to, and I think everyone that I connect with, you know, comes from that baseline, but it's hard for me to understand how people can't come from that baseline, why it's hard for people to love, why it's hard for people to accept people saying, I love you and not necessarily mean it in a perverty or a romantic right. sort of way. I mean, you know, I, I guess I, I love to give love verbally and hugs and, and, and I like to receive it, but it's so funny because I find myself around some people that it's really difficult mm -hmm. for them to communicate it back whether it's in the word i love you or a touch or a hug more men or women women they can't receive love no i mean i get not, i know my issue my dad and i loved my dad and he passed but you know he was very he's very italian born in italy mm -hmm. very stoic and i know he loved me absolutely did yeah. but he did it in different ways mm -hmm. which i got to understand what like what well like you know you know, if he went out and saw something that I'd like, or he was in the market and, and, and know that I like, you know, this cupcake or some shit like that, he would buy it or he'd take me to go get ice cream. It wasn't very demonstrative. Oh, I love you, my daughter, or a huggy touchy, you know, you know, it would, but I understood it, but it's not to say that I was happy about it. I mean, I understood it, but what I found in my life sometimes um, I get a lot, I get like 50% of people that remind me exactly of my dad. Mm -hmm. And it's real. And, huh? Where did you learn to be demonstrative? From my mother. Okay. Yeah. From my mother and also partially from my mom because she overcompensated. But I realized that's what I wanted and what I needed. So if I didn't speak up for myself to express that, then mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't. So, so you learned it on your own too. Well, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like, this is what I like. And it's really difficult to be friends. Forget about partners. I've never, I couldn't be with a partner like that. But even with friends, it's really difficult for me to understand that. And they're like, well, why can't you accept me for me? This is who I am. And I'm like, but that's so wrong. <laughs> but you're so wrong. That's not the way to be, you know? Um, and it's like, why can't you just accept? And I, and like, so, so how do we, accept from others, wanting them to accept who we are, but still finding that middle ground? Well, I, I would say a lot of it comes from having a really strong sense of self. Mm -hmm. uh, I was raised with two parents who were extremely demonstrative and verbal in their love of me. And so I never grew up feeling unloved uh, at all. And I think that's why I'm very loving towards everybody. But then I'll run into people who are not that way. And um, <clears throat> I used to think it was really evolved of me to just 
accept them. And, <laughs> but, but you know what? Now that I'm older, no, fuck you. If you're going <laughs> to give me shit, if like, so like I, how many of you have seen, anybody seen that, that viral video of that ridiculous woman at Victoria's Secret no, that no, had no. a meltdown? The Did, one about guys, the bra it, that she like, yeah. Was, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, the the Muslim woman yes, was in yes, there yes. with a little coupon, gonna get a free pair of panties, and this blonde chick like was in her space, and she like asked her to back off because we're still in a pandemic, and the woman got physical with her, and she started filming her, and the right as the woman took a swipe at her, and then this blonde chick, this st I'm sorry, straight up Karen starts freaking out saying, don't feel me don't feel me and like fakes a breakdown mm -hmm. drops her her purse gently to the floor and then straight up like catches the vapors and just like pa pretends to pass out chases this woman around the store saying turn get that get, get her away from me get away from me as she's chasing her yeah some people See, something like that no don't ask me to love her. Fuck that <laughs> bitch. Okay? I'm sorry. Fuck her. Because, no, I don't have to love racists who want me to be dead or think I should still be enslaved. I don't have to love them. I love me more. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. exactly. Now, I think Mar went to the restroom, so give her a few minutes. I, um, but... I wanted to bring up, you know, we were talking, her and I, we have these, like I said, deep conversations. And, you know, we, you know, I said we were talking when the song was playing, like, what do you want to talk about? And she has a story about diversity. But so I, I, I want to bring that up. Um, you know, it's for me, the media, you know, um, you know, Glad and, and, and all these other organizations are looking at the major networks and the movies and, and sort of saying, mm. you know, you don't have enough people of color or you don't have enough diversity and, and companies are saying you must hire more diverse. Of course, people who are qualified, you know, but, mm -hmm. you know, like, let's make it more diverse. And that's, like I said, not the only the company I work for. It's for everyone. It's, and it's mm -hmm. like, first of all, to have that conversation is the most stupid thing I ever, I really, I, it's just like, why are we even sitting here? Well, yeah, I know, but I don't agree oh, with it. But I mean, it's sort of like to sit here and actually tell people we have to hire more diverse people. And, hmm. you know, and, you know, and I sit there and I go, I understand that part. Hold on. Mar's coming back. Mar, 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 Mar. There Sorry. she goes. Um, Sorry about that, and folks. we're talking about diversity. And I, I'm saying is, we, it oh. the, is it that more parts need to be written ahead of time? It's, it's not about not necessarily that. I'm even talking about the corporate structure. Like on every level of the corporate structure and freelancers, you know, hire more diverse people. And, and crew and everything not behind. Necessarily. No, you're, you're, you guys don't. Look, I work for a corporation. Yeah. Okay. You don't. I'm telling you. Yeah. Don't sit here and go, not necessarily. Because, well, no, it's my turn to talk. Okay. <laughs> hey, let me finish my thought. Um, it's, it, that's what we're hearing. Mm -hmm. And what I find it really interesting is that, you know, they're sending us out with the message of hire more diverse people. Mm -hmm. But the point is, I don't understand why the top level management isn't more diverse. Why are they yeah, still all, it. you know, people? Like... Oh, you don't understand why that is? Really? No. <laughs> really? No, no. I do understand why it is. But if you're starting to start to have a culture or awakening. A, a, a awakening to sit here and say, you know, hire more diverse people, then why, why does it go from the top, not from the top, but from like, yeah, like should. down versus upwards as well is it because they're already in their positions well, right, i don't have an answer for oh. this i'm just saying i do <laughs> i do speak because speak this, the, the entire power structure of the united states in particular is based on white supremacy it has always been so when you have the founding fathers who are creating this amazing groundbreaking document the Bill of Rights and the Constitution and saying all men are created equal. First of all, they say all men. And second of all, 90% of them were slave owners. It's this illusion. People are so indoctrinated into the power structure, the way that it is set up and has always been 
they don't even see it. It's the water that we swim in. They mm -hmm. don't realize that they're not diverse up at the top because it's always been that way. I mean, there was the interview that, um, what's his face? Matt, uh, not Ben Affleck, who's, who's the- Damon. Matt Damon. Partner? Matt Damon. Matt Damon was talking about, uh, someone was mentioning that we need more uh, diverse diversity behind the camera. And he was like, why? He so didn't even get it. He did not get the I, the fact that if stories are being told from the point of view of the white supremacist culture that is so pervasive, then the stories are going to stay the same and they're going to support that same white supremacy. Exactly. And in, in, in entertainment, if the people at the top of these corporations that are feeding these images through the television and through the screen to the rest of the world, they are shaping how people see the world. They are supporting the idea that people that are black or, you know, people of color or women are peripheral players mm -hmm. and the people who are the most important, you know, characters in the story are white males. It's always mm -hmm. been that way and it is changing. Yeah, so eventually somebody hey. is going to, and it's about money too. It's like, yeah. when, I mean, when, having what? Kamala, Kamala Harris, you know, is her first female vice president is, um, I think one of the most positive groundbreaking things that could happen for the people at the top you know um, yeah and you know Durga and, and Gayanne I totally so, agree with you um, I support what you were saying Gayanne because Sheryl Sandberg do you guys know who mm -hmm. she is um mm -hmm. Facebook she yeah. says not only do they see resumes and it's she's has she has shown that she has she's proven it when resumes the exact yeah. same qualifications have a sorry Durga but a black sounding name they are overlooked. <laughs> they are overlooked, and Thanks, more sorry. and and more <laughs> men's resumes make it to her desk than yeah. women. So she's like, I'm not pushing. We yeah. have to hire women, and we have to hire minorities to look good. She's like, but we cannot reflect what the people want if we don't represent the people. So she mm -hmm. said, not and yeah. she said, not only do we have to take the names away from these resumes and from the qualifications, what would happen if they just looked at the qualifications and gave the resumes numbers? Mm -hmm. What would happen, right. Right. you know? And she I says, really like and, and if women have a hard time competing with these men, minority women have double the time because Correct. not only are they considered <laughs> bitches when they're, when they're winning, winning and triumphant in their jobs, but, and, and men are not, you know, they're not dicks when they're, when they're winning, but they also have to overcome the, the that thinking of, of racism, even though corporate corporations say they're not racist, they still are <laughs> mostly white it's men. Just, it's well, a systemic it's, problem. Amadeus? And, yes. Uh, Amadeus? Oh, yes. Go ahead. Go, go ahead, ahead, Amadeus. I think it's a systemic problem, you know. Um, there's there's a lot to be fixed in the problem. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I mean, I, if that, the Matt Damon thing, I've just got to say, because I have my computer propped here on Howard Zinn's book, that shameful, sorry, I've got to say if that Matt Damon said that. Yeah. His babysitter was Howard Zinn. So of all people, you should right. know a little bit about <laughs> right. history. Um, a very right. entitled white uh, boy. Um, but there's there's so much change to be done. I mean, just my own tiny personal story. I you know I went to USC and I was one of two women in directing there in the graduate program. And constantly by a woman dean, I was told, why don't you go into producing or writing? You know and we just don't have women applying. Now add in, you know, people of color. And, you know, not only do we have the problem of no people at top and role models, then you hear, oh, well, there aren't qualified people applying. Okay. So there's so much right. that has to happen from the ground up, you know, and from the top down. It's mm -hmm. a long process and we just have to keep, we just have to keep saying things. Well, I, mean, I brought up this topic because Mara and I said we were sidebarring and she said, oh, I had a conversation with a friend about you know, diversity. I, so, you know, it was it's interesting because, you know, um, we were talking about the system and 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 systemic yes. uh, racism. And it was really interesting because it brings to mind uh, something somebody said to me. They said, well, I wasn't born 200 years ago. And I said, well, I wasn't either, <laughs> but somebody's still perpetuating the crazy. You know, mm -hmm. which is, which is very true. And um, 
to say, I, you know, uh, and, and it is, it's all about whiteness. And I think, and, and it's funny that um, she was talking about it because we're swimming in it, mm -hmm. you know, to the point mm -hmm. where we don't even know because this is what we know. Um, and uh, we're just really a product of colonialism. Yeah, and it's yeah, not true. just the U.S. You know, we we have our own shit show here, but you know, a little bit of history of how other countries and wow, just look at Jamaica and woof, there's a lot oh, of shit. <laughs> well, you heard about you heard you guys heard about Jamaica, right? Mm -hmm. Um, they're uh actually suing the U.K. for reparations for <laughs> slavery. Awesome. I, I yeah. don't know if you guys. Uh, I read. <laughs> did you read about? Did you read about that? Well, yeah. I mean, no, no, you I, didn't. Yeah, I, yeah, it was I, kind I, of a. I mean, I just find it really sort of stupid, and I, I will say the, I will use the word stupid, um, is that, you know, when the whole Black Lives Matter and all that stuff did surface and, and really brought the the world, I mean, not the world, but at least, maybe the world, yes, but at least the world. to a standstill, um, it, it amazed me how many white people, you know, were, like, they, they just weren't understanding what white privilege was. Yeah. And, you know, and, and coming up with, oh, you know, my daughter's married to a black man. I, I, I understand. And, and, you know, to hear this time and time again, and it's like, no, you don't understand. Unless you're a person of color, <laughs> you have mm -hmm. no real idea. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. At all. That's right. You know, and it's sort of, I can't sit here. I mean, look, you know, I, I am very open-minded. I am very supportive. I, I, I am colorblind, but I can't sit here as much as I, I will never sit here and say, I know what it feels like to walk into a room yep. and have all eyes think you're a criminal. You're going to steal something or something. like. I have no idea. Yeah. And sometimes right. it's yeah. even, it's even more subtle than that, you know? Because oftentimes I don't even know the subtle stuff. That's yeah, what I'm well, saying. Yeah, you know, and it was interesting because I was trying to explain that to somebody, and you know, oftentimes I always tell people that you know, people of color, we have a sixth sense in the sense that all we have to do is walk in a room, and oftentimes right. it's not what is being said. Oftentimes is what is not being said. Mm. You know, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, and it's it's palpable. You know, it really is palpable, and. You know, and even in discussing this uh, with this person, because it's somebody in the gay community, and um, the the one thing that um, I often find with white people in the gay community is this idea that we share the same oppression and we do not. <laughs> you know, right. um, I I really I you know that. I no, it's problematic. It really is because. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, uh, you know, uh, gays are not a race of people, <laughs> you know, right. and um, I have no doubt that gay folks have their challenges. You have your challenges because you're gay. Um, but at the end of the day, you are a white woman yeah. who benefits from that privilege. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I oftentimes think that that is so, you know, um, so overlooked mm -hmm. in, in the community. You know, we all... You know, I, I've noticed white folks in the in the community love wearing their oppression on their sleeves. You know, <laughs> I'm gay. <laughs> right. Love me. You know, and well, you know, wait. but but at the same time, you wouldn't think twice about calling the cops on my black ass if you saw me walking right. through your neighborhood. Right. right. <laughs> you know. I was going to say there you know, is a lot of racism in the gay community. And there's a and lot of it. You know. Really confusing me. I don't get it. I mean, you know, and I've. I've yeah, and, and the thing is, is I, I get it because we you, you bring your bullshit into the community. So you bring your misogyny and you bring your classism mm -hmm. and you bring your racism and you bring all of this stuff into this community and and you're all sort of trying to sort of figure it out. And the one thing that I, I notice that is so lost is the idea of intersectionality, the idea that we're all having multiple right. experiences, mm -hmm. you know, right. and I'm a gay woman and, you know, you're a gay woman, but we're not having the same experience. No, <laughs> no not at all. We're, we're, you know what I'm saying? And, and this I mean, whole what, idea of, you know, whole... of, you know, parading, you know, under this rainbow flag, you know, I, I remember <laughs> going to the Palms on my 21st birthday and bumping into this woman by accident and her calling me a fucking nigger. 
you know wow. so you know this this is something that i i often find that is really overlooked in the gay community and i mm -hmm. i don't think it's it's is addressed enough i think that's very you know very wait, interesting wait hmm? turnabout though turnabout is fair play though there is a great deal of homophobia in the black community there is thank I, you yes sister thank it you really thank you bothers me it, yeah. you're right you're absolutely um, right is that religious it's our yeah, history a lot of it is, is religious it's not just religious mm -hmm. what uh, a lot of people don't understand is that breeding for black people was our only means of survival for centuries mm -hmm. the only way to perpetuate ourselves not to mention the fact that black men were emasculated Oh, purposely yeah. by slave owners to the point where they did they practiced a thing called buck breaking where they would take the biggest strongest buck black male mm -hmm. and bend him over and anally rape him in oh. front of the entire plantation to break his spirit and basically tell everybody don't get any ideas if we can subjugate this strong man in front of you we can do that and worse to all of you Jesus. so black male masculinity has been a very very difficult and problematic uh subject in our community and has been pushed uh in in very unhealthy ways like you prove your mass manhood by having as many babies as you can right. or this that or the other thing so when black men want to come out as gay they couldn't not only because of the church but because of those things that i just mm. mentioned mm. and black lesbians i mean forget about it i mean it, it, it's, it's just it's, um it, it's in, in the way that we've been sexualized um yeah that, has you know that, has a lot to to do with it too it's just our history and and yeah. so it's it's problematic in the black church and thank you for bringing it up sis because it's very true you know it's very true yeah. um and yeah. and you know i mean i think of about prop eight and um and I found it so ironic because it was the same year that that we voted for Barama, uh, uh, Barack Obama for the first time, and yet the majority of Black folks who voted voted um, voted for Prop Eight. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. um, now and if you all remember Prop Eight, if you voted for it, you really were against against it. it right? It, were they really? It was confusing. It was very confusing. No yeah. one, wasn't it no on Prop 8? No, it was, it was uh, yes, I believe. It was yes on Prop 8 because Prop 8 was actually the legislation that was trying oh, yeah, to, yeah, right. to to restrict that. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, you know. Now, um, what do you guys think of people, and I'm guilty of this, I'm sort of like in confession here. I hide behind right. social media because I'm afraid to speak up at times. If I see ra blatant racism, but I can't prove it's racism, or I see a Karen, unless, unless somebody actually called or assaulted somebody or somebody called somebody uh, a bad name but if it's kind of subtle racism call it I, out i, I want to call, call it out call you got to call I'm it out i'm afraid of being no, shot no but call it what out because no but my being thing shot or no beat up? but my thing know, is but no but my thing is it's up to white people to do this yeah. it's not up to us yeah. It's you like, know, I, I'm it's very not. brave on Facebook, but I find myself not. Yeah, not but then what's talking out loud at Ralph? But then you're not helping me. Yeah, right. what's the? Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just like that's the thing that I we need for white folks to understand. The one thing that I am seeing with white people is that for the first time, I am see, I am seeing white people have this conversation with each other. Yeah. which is not right. something I've ever seen. But you got to call it out because it. I can't call it out you know i mean the um, thing is like what's the worst thing that could happen on social media you lose followers yeah exactly who fucking cares what's more important she's not talking losing... about that though she's talking no, about life person. no no yeah. she just you said you would oh, i'm i'm you, all out but on you social media understood but you I just have... said you won't call it out on social media my no, question no, i do i do i don't like if i hear something but it's not blatant like somebody calling somebody the n-word or somebody beating somebody up but it they're they're being racist but it's subtle I have walked away because I'm afraid of physically being assaulted. Are you talking about in real life? In real life, She's like a rap or online. Rite Aid or CBS. So, wait, let me ask you a question. If you saw a young woman being verbally abused by a man. Oh, that I would call Would out. you do something? Yes, I would. So what's the difference? I'm talking about the so subtle ones. So what's the difference? So what's the difference? The dirty look from somebody to a black person. But I've done it. Like, for example, I was out to dinner uh -huh. <clears throat> with some friends of mine. Actually, I was some friends of mine. And then 
<clears throat> some of their relatives of Republicans came along. And we were sitting there, and there was a table of you know, black people there, a table of black people there, a table mm -hmm. of black people there. And <clears throat> one of them said, oh, my God, there's a lot of black people. And then they – but they were talking loud. And I can't tell you how uh, – like – yeah. Why it's just I it was like why why is this person sitting and it wasn't my friend okay why is this person sitting at my table <clears throat> and I and I know he was a Republican and I literally sort of mentioned to him you know really you know please because I, I keep your first of all you shouldn't be saying that and be please keep your voice down I mean yeah. I was like mortified because every time he said it they would look <laughs> I mean like everybody would look because you know I was like. And I finally, you know, went to, I literally did this when I went to the bathroom. I went to every table. I said, I am so sorry. Oh, I am so sorry. Yeah. Because it was so insulting to mm -hmm. me. And then I told my friend, I am never going out with that person ever again. It is against everything morally that I yeah. believe in. You know, let them sit with their Republican Did you tell friends. him? You tell him? Yeah, that's my question. Absolutely. Did I did. Yeah. No, and at the about, table? At the table. I said, please do not yeah. say that. You know, it's like, it's really insulting and it's rude. It's ignorant. No, I could do that in a small circle. I'm just getting out there to vocally be more present for people and call it out. But I have found myself in situations where I've walked away and then felt ashamed because it's like I should have, I should have said something. Like a, a clerk giving a black boy a dirty look. He didn't do anything. He's just black. He's just standing there. And, and the clerk was very offensive. Um, and you're right, Durga. You're right. And it's like, why don't I just speak up? What am I afraid? I'm afraid of violence. I'm afraid of You're, white violence. You know what? You're not well, alone. Water, I mean, water, well, you know, imagine how for... black people feel when they're confronted yeah, by white right. violence. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it happened to my, my Patsy. She was walking out of oh, all of you, yeah. you know, it was earlier this year and she was walking out of the hospital and she had two guys following her. Oh my God. She was crossing and one of them was wearing one of the 3% t-shirts, one mm. of the, you know, and one of them was wearing a Confederate flag oh, and they accosted her. <sighs> they, you know, and they tried to make up some shit and thank God there was a deputy, uh, a sheriff, a deputy, a deputy who, who was across the street and saw it, you know, and we later find out that, you know, the guy had a shitload of, you know, uh, guns and rifles in his trunk. And it was, it was, wow. you know, I mean, it was really kind of scary, you know, and um, so, and, and we're, we're really living in, in sort of weird and perilous times. And this whole idea about whether you're Republican or not, or whether or not you live in a, in a progressive city or not a progressive city, yeah. racism is everywhere. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I mean, you know what, listen, there are a lot of progressives out there who like to tout their progressiveness and how woke I am. And there's some real subtle racism with them. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it, it mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it takes a lot of different forms, you know, whether you're Republican, whether you're a Democrat, whether, you know, I've had people say, wow, in this city, I've been called a nigger in West Hollywood. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I know you make that face, but, you know, <laughs> racism is, is, is everywhere, you know, and, and it yeah. comes in all forms. And this whole idea that because you live in the city or, you know, you're this or you're that, you're not a racist. And it's so ingrained and it goes back to, you know, um, systemic racism we're swimming in it you know um we we're so ingrained with the racism is so ingrained in our system that we don't even realize it a lot of times that we're being racist i agree you know i lived in in santa cruz off and on for many years because one of my former friends used to live there and i went to massage school there um and uh I hate that city because <laughs> it's full of what I call lipstick liberals, yeah. which are these people that are wearing peace signs and tie dye, and they're all about civil rights and blah blah blah. But they clutch their handbag when I get uh, in the elevator with them. Mm. It's it's there's such a hypocrisy, and and I hate to say it, but um, being liberal does not excuse one from being racist because I've seen it. Yeah, no, you it's know, there. really. When I really, really first noticed in a big way was uh, the OJ verdict. <laughs> now, uh, I went to school with OJ's first wife's little sister. So I used to spend a lot of time at the Rockingham house. Uh, and OJ gave me the creeps. I mean, he was mm -hmm. one of those people, you know, when you're like hanging out, la, 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 ha, ha, kiki, ha, ha. 
and then the hair stands up in the back of your neck and you feel like the temperature drops a couple of degrees and you turn around and he's standing in the doorway. That's how he used to make me feel. Now, did I know if he killed Nicole or not? I personally uh, follow the school of thought that he was covering for his oldest son because there's a lot of evidence to back that up. But the fact was when he was acquitted, I saw some of my really good friends lose their minds. Uh, and it really made me have to step back from a few people for a minute because they wanted to get that Negro and throw him under the jail. And when he was acquitted, like so many other wealthy white men would have been, they didn't like the shoe being on the other foot. And I was like, wow, really? That's what you, that's how you guys talk. Like when I'm not around and they like forgot that I was there because I'm like in the club, but they were just speaking freely. I was gobsmacked at some of the shit I heard. Yeah. Well, it's also about power and class too. And, and those are things that, you know, we um, have to take into consideration too. You know, I'm sure that if OJ was any old brother, you know, uh, walking down Pico and Crenshaw, and he did, yeah. and he was accused of some shit like that. You know, he'd be up underneath the jail. You yeah. know, just straight up. Yeah. And so, um, I mean, the thing is, people who commit crimes, it really shouldn't matter what, who they are. If they commit a crime, they commit a crime, and they should be judged for that crime. But because of this country, people who are black, Hispanic, anyone who's a minority is automatically considered guilty before yeah. it's just they are guilty whether they did it or not and that's my problem in going to law school it's like you're you're that's taught in law school <laughs> but you're taught in law school you know innocent until proven guilty but that's really not the way the system is i oh, know the system mm -hmm. is just to win the, the case no. wherever side you're on just win the case no but i have the law but but I, but I have twist it but i well, have it also found... depends too because it's about money and it's not just about everybody because... okay because you know we can talk about young black men who were getting you know much stronger sentences because of crack cocaine and how that was really affecting a lot exactly. of black folks so i really mm -hmm. do think it's about the system itself yeah money you know a guy like oj but at the end of the day it's really about you know how how the system is 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 gamed and it's really gamed for white I, folks who have money i mean even, even I mean, like, like even bill you know? cosby i mean you know he did it yeah he said he did it yeah but it didn't i know he said he did it and because his lawyer was very smart and on a technicality but that's money <laughs> it, and that's where it goes back to money but you know if it was a white man he would have never been charged to start with really but weinstein but hold on weinstein was just so flagrant and he talked about it and he mm -hmm. actually no he did i mean he was he was in his cronies and stuff he was like this is what i did you know bill cosby wasn't telling people this is what i did you know I think Dan, Bill Cosby truly Dan, thinks he did. Wait, yeah. wait, wait. Bill Cosby attacked one of my best friends. Oh, okay. Geez. Oh. And he, uh, she was a young actress, beautiful blonde woman. I mean, stunningly, breathtakingly gorgeous. And he was, you know, Dr. Huxtable. And he yep. said, you know, I really see something in you. I want to uh, have you come and read uh, a scene with me. I want to see what I can do to help you. So, of course, she went to his house in the middle of the day, uh, and she walked in, and he was all sweet and nice and offered her something to drink, and she, something told her, don't drink that. And she politely refused it, and he kept trying to push it on her, and when he realized she wasn't going to drink it, he, like, Jekyll and Hyde, mm. flipped on her, shoved her up against the wall, was ripping at her clothes, tried to sexually assault her and she got away from him and went straight to the police and they were like bill cosby you want us to arrest bill cosby are you out of your mind he's the most powerful man in television mm -hmm. yeah and it's your word against his yeah. um bill everybody knew about exactly. bill For it years. was a well-known <laughs> not so really? secret oh, yeah. people yeah. that worked on the oprah show uh 
the, the young interns, they would call them aside and when Bill was going to be on the show and say, do not under any circumstances be alone in a room mm -hmm. with this man. Wow. In fact, I understand that he had the nickname Pill Cosby because oh people knew God. he was drugging. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And that for was the some... women that came forward, my friend, uh, when all these women came forward again, she chose not to. Uh, she's married to a very prominent businessman uh, and they have kids and she decided not to. And I know I've been hearing now that he's been let out. Several people I know know of at least two, three, four, five women who did not come forward. So for the 60 that came forward, that I would, I would multiply that by 10 for the mm -hmm. women yeah. who have not come forward. Mm -hmm. So people knew. Yeah. He was yeah. as flagrant as Weinstein. Oh, you know why? I mean, was. then do, it makes me think that he probably never assaulted uh, Felicia. No, no. Uh, Rashad. No. 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 Because no. you know, but, and 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 some of the others on the show that de that really defend him, um, the other women, like I mean, nobody's yeah. really defended him. To be honest with you, the only one, actually, the only one who said anything is Felicia Rashad. The rest of them refuse, and I and I know some of the cast members. They just refuse to talk yeah. about it. Okay, so let's just you talk know? about Felicia. You know, I don't understand how she could, in her right mind, be. Um, you know, defending him. I, you know what? I, I'm, I'm. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of there with you. And she got a lot of blowback mm -hmm, for that. You know, because she just got a new position at Howard. She's actually the uh, the dean of of uh, the the arts Theater department. Art, right. yeah. yeah, Howard, Howard. Howard, University. Howard University. Oh, yeah, it's a college. I it's a university. She, I thought it's one it. of the girls that played one of his daughters also spoke up for him. Ruby, uh, Rudy, the one who played Rudy. Yeah, none yeah, of them she really. Did. You know, none of them have sort of. I know Jamal hasn't said anything. No, Lisa refuses hasn't. to talk about it. You know, the only one. Well, and listen, people are say. people are complicated. Yeah. You know, and you really want to believe something about somebody. You know, and if you're talking about. The type of relationship that Felicia Rashad and Bill Cosby had, you know, listen, I, I, I don't take her side, but, you know, when you see a side of a person for all of these years, you don't really want to see this really mm -hmm. fucked up side it's of this denial. other person, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a, really a lot of denial going yeah. on. Mm -hmm. Just like you his know, wife, his own damn his wife. His wife, who's beautiful, I mean, I never understood, you know, and that's the thing about a lot of men. You have a beautiful woman at home yep. and you go and do this, you know, like... And, you know and that's about male privilege, you know, mm -hmm. and, and money and power. I don't think you can assess that as if someone's in their quote unquote right mind. Right, right. What's that? I'm I, sorry. I don't know. You know, I don't know this for a fact, but rumor has it that it has been a marriage of convenience for all this time and that Camille actually, uh, how shall I say, she plays for the other team. Oh, really? really? Oh, my. Yeah. Oh. Girl, yes. really? That's I a new one. I have even respect for her now. <laughs> because as a lesbian, uh, okay. she should be. As a lesbian, I'm available. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> no, 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 I like her. She's attractive. What was happening in the house when she was there? She was in the oh, house. Oh, okay, that's kind of gross. Oh, that's kind of gross. But to say, you mentioned Lisa Bonet. That's Notice it. her silence is deafening. Yeah. So you know they won't. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, Malcolm is another one who who won't really discuss it, and that's a really hard place to be in. I, I, you know, I um, I don't know if I, I do. Actually, I, I, you know, Felicia okay. Rashad, she should have just kept her mouth shut yeah. as far as I'm yeah. just just you know just don't do what say you want. don't you don't know. but don't say anything. Yeah, you know, you know. Um, I remember um, Lisa Bonet saying that there was a sinister side to him. That she she did admit mm -hmm. that so mm -hmm. yeah yeah I mean some people have said that you know um, about him um, but I had no idea but on that yeah. note let's let go and upbeat let's play oh. another one of Mars songs oh, <laughs> another, uh, another one of these songs this is uh this is not my home there we go. Making my way back to you. This is not my home. I'm just passing, I'm just passing, I'm just passing. 
making my way back to you. Venom thick as clotted cream found its way in to the stream. They've gone crazy, crazy. See them rush to fill their cups, shove and trample, lap it up. They've gone. Making my way back to you. This is not my home. I'm distressing, I'm distressing, I'm distressing. Making my way, working my way, pushing my way. way. Pulling my way. Making my way back to you. Back to you. Making love to Anaki. In their beds of fallacy, they're crazy, crazy. Watch them wallow in the pile. Tell me when the rank and file went crazy, crazy. It's clearer till I am nearer. Till it gets clearer till I am nearer. Till it gets clearer till I am nearer. Till it gets clearer till I am nearer. Nothing is familiar. This is not familiar to me. Making my way back to you. Making my way, working my way, pushing my way, pulling my way, breaking my way. Back to me. Back to me. Back to me. Wow, I mean, I love, love that. that. When we were on the commercial, it wasn't a commercial break, I'm so TV. Um, she's like, this is one of those songs. Tell them how this transpired. Yeah, this this was, I mean, yeah, I, we must have been on some sort of, you know, mind meld kind of thing. But I was, she was actually writing um, some lyrics and, and I was actually in the other room and I was playing this riff and she's like, that's perfect. That's what I need. That's what I need. For, and it just all came out. It was like, it was one of those things where it's like, okay, just, you read my mind and... This is like this it's, is just, it's just fast. I mean, I'm creative. I think we all are creative here, and uh, you know, but I'm creative in a whole different way. So it's just like to hear like that that would just like that you guys are so connected, same different rooms, but just like meant for it to sort of. That's how it happened. It was it was kind of and you know those things don't happen very often. You only see that in the movies, <laughs> you know. Um, but um, but yeah, I mean, it was it sort of just sort of came together. I don't know why it made me feel like I was in the South, but I grew up in Florida. Just well, it kind of was was you know that's that's the that was the whole sentiment of the song basically oh, yeah. that this is not my home. Mm -hmm. America is not my home anymore. And so you know we had the feel calls, you know the slave feel calls in the background and. What do you so, think? I told them to play that song just to have, just to fill time. Yeah. It just goes right off right, the way. Right. So, so it was really kind of like, you know, this is not my home. Kind of like. America's All right, I'm going to take you back. I'm going to embarrass her right now. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm going to embarrass you. Okay. What was the name of the band you were in? It was Strange Fruit. And we, we played on the uh, soundtrack to Strange Days, this movie that came out a million years ago. With, I don't know if you guys remember that film. I do. I you do, do remember that I do film. the film. And I actually remember your band. Um, I, I said, let, let me embarrass her. Let's let's play some oh, of her stuff from way, God. way back. Do you okay, have it? Cool. All right. Let's oh, play it. Oh, my gosh. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry ahead of time.
grass grows on the ground as I expound above the sound. Look around now, sit down and listen. Dark brown shades drowning the rays of rock. Close your eyes and still see the yellow sun. Feel the earth beneath your feet, reaching to meet the sea, the sky, and I fly high. The ground beneath the sound that's going round and round and round and colors flowing down. In a world of white lies, they say freedom is the answer to a question you don't have to ask. And then my hope dies. Memory lane for you. <laughs> what year was this? This was 19. Shit. This was. When you oh, can say 19. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, 19. Wow. I, I want to say this was either 1995 or 1996. Oh, wow. And I remember Catherine Bigelow had come to the show to see us play because she didn't know. She was looking for, you know, talent and she was looking yeah. for people for the soundtrack. And. And so, you know, she came to see us play and it was like, you know, you guys are just a motley crew and I don't know what it is about you guys, but I like you and I want you on the soundtrack. Oh so it was God. like, okay, you oh. know, and oh, the rest awesome. is history and, you know, Great. never look back again. You know, it's a long time ago. Except when you're I on between the sheets. Funny, yeah. <laughs> What's that? I have a funny story about Captain Zeta. Oh, okay. Um, Wait, who is she again? Ago, Why does that name sound familiar? Was, Locker. I was in this really high budget uh, video for Paul Simon, and it was actually for You Can Call Me Al. Oh. And this was a several day shoot, and she was the director with her partner. Uh, I was one of the angels in the architecture, spinning mm. in infinity. We were shooting underwater. I was dressed Great like lyric. this fluorescent Tina doll. They had all these different sets, and it was this wild video. I, I mean, they spent close to a million dollars, I think. And because Paul didn't like how he looked, he oh. didn't like his hair and this peanut coat. They put, they had this raincoat covered in whole peanuts in the shell that they painstakingly hot glued this coat. And he didn't like That's look. funny. So they scrapped the whole thing and they barely had any money left, which is why they only had uh, the one room fixed camera shoot with Chevy Chase. And that's the video that you now see. Ah. Mm. Oh, wow. Okay. Right on. All right, I hate to put more music on top of more music, but why not? Put more music on top of more, more music. music. Right, right on. So pick up that guitar. You have one more song. <sighs> okay, <here we> go. <laughs> it's like but, we get carried away with all these other topics, and it's like, but I love, I want to hear more I, uh, stuff. Do, do, should I keep, do I keep the headphones on? You don't have to. Okay, good. Because no one's right. talking to you while you're doing it. You're concentrating. No, you're right. Absolutely right. I mean, unless you're we channeling from another movie. universe, I don't know. No, but... no. Uh, oh, sorry. That's what Amadeus and Cheryl look for. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. And we haven't heard anything from Cheryl. Right now. Like, like... She's channeling. Cheryl's the quiet one. Is she the quiet yeah, one? Yeah, she's well, the quiet one. I I'm inspired. I got to tell you guys. I'm pretty inspired listening to this. Thank you. 
I mean, yeah, seriously, who that. doesn't Amazing. love a Stevie Wonder? I mean, <laughs> I just did a photo shoot. So funny. I did a photo shoot um, uh, last week. I don't remember the week. when It was CSI Vegas. Um, and the actress, Paula, she said when she, we were doing her single, just put on Stevie Wonder. <laughs> I don't care what Stevie Wonder. I want to do my singles to Stevie Wonder. And it was constant i was playing dj i always play dj at the photo shoots as i'm art directing also playing dj but it you know there's never enough time never enough there's never enough no that's what i was trying to say there's always enough time to hear stevie wonder and you know he has i mean he's just amazing i mean seriously i don't listen to him all the time but then every once in a while because there's so much amazing music out there mm. but then when you hear stevie Wonder, you go wow just wow yeah yeah, pretty much. Um, I always ask people what their what their. Of course, everybody always says this album, but but what is your favorite Stevie Stevie album? Anybody? What's if you don't have an Stevie album, album, you can do a song. I'll take a song. Okay. If you don't do an album, mine is I just called to say I love you. you that would oh, be yours. Yeah. yeah, you can feel it all don't, over. Don't don't say that to any hardcore Stevie Wonder. Of course, fan I won't. ever. Well, right. it's just oh. like Bruce Springsteen. Don't say um, that born to born USA album. Okay. Yeah, right. that's like oh no. What's yours? That song I just said. Um, you can feel it all over. I can't you sing. Oh, I know. I mean, you can feel it all over. Uh, that's uh, 
Thank you very much. It's like every marching band in high school played that when I was a little girl. Yeah, like high school marching band. No, but I still love it. But I love every. It's a great song. Durga, favorite Stevie Wonder song. Yeah, just uh, one. Album. Uh, album. Uh, Say album. Songs in the key of life. Songs it's in the key of life. Yeah, it's it's. I would have Absolute to say, nasty. yeah. But so it's talking book. Talking book I, is I awesome. Have, yeah. yeah. I I would say my They're favorite probably. Stevie album is uh, Inner Visions. Yeah. Oh yeah. Shit. Yeah. yeah. That's course, what I'm saying. You, know, you I, can't have a favorite. That's why it's right. easier to kind of say. What's your kind of favorite Stevie? Because his albums are just so complete. Like, I, I mean, one of my, well, one again, I can't say it's my favorite. One of my favorites is As. Oh, that's a great song. Yeah. 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 yeah Amadeus, you will song. go, not, uh, Cheryl and Amadeus, start looking up Google. What's your yeah, favorite? Right, right. Oh, no, no. I love, uh, you know, uh, Isn't She Lovely? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? His daughter. I do. I love that song too. It that is tough. I get. I always blank when I'm asked to me like favorite music or favorite uh, film. Even though I'm in it, I blank. Got <laughs> <laughs> express something, but uh, inner visions and um and it changes my mood. I, that's interesting. I, with him, I think it changes depending on my mood, which I wouldn't say with most people. He he is he emits so much from a core moment to me compared to most. Uh, just about anybody mm-hmm. I can think that he can line up with a core emotion more. I don't know if that makes any sense. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I know. I know what you're saying. I mean, because uh, this is not something that you want to say, because, you know, sometimes lyrically, uh, Stevie, you know, is, is a little weird, <laughs> Yeah, you know, Yeah. but um, yeah, yeah, I mean, he makes up his own shit, you know, he just makes up his own, but, lyric, he whatever. Can. but you know, <laughs> but I think, I think Amadeus sort of hit it. It's really kind of, uh, uh, you know, he takes you. He there. does. He's just sort of an emotional kind of. We did um, the network. We we did the Stevie Wonder special, and and I I was there. And but I've I mean, I've I've worked with Stevie on a on a, on the TV side, whenever he's done specials or music specials, and I've got to talk to him, meet him over thirty years, and he's mm-hmm. still like to be in his presence mm-hmm. is like royalty. That's and sweet. but he's so I mean there's everything about this guy like if someone turned around to me and said you know Stevie is you know whatever rapes women or something horrible like, mm-hmm. I would absolutely yeah. like yeah. I, that's one person I would never believe <laughs> ever 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 yeah yeah I uh, <laughs> I've, I've I've been in his company like maybe once or twice and you know the thing that I I really um, admire. He's so self-deprecating. Yes. He doesn't he doesn't take himself very seriously. You know he's, he's just kind of you know yeah he's a bit of a flirt. Yep. And, oh my and, god, uh, he is. Yeah, but um, but he's lovely. Yeah. He's hey, lovely. you know what? I just got a text from someone saying they're on hold. Do you see that we have a caller? Because the caller said she's been on hold for a while. Oh no. Oh no, she's been on hold. Yeah. Um. So if you're listening. The number is 323-524-2599. Um, 323-524-2599. So you shouldn't stay on hold because you're on the, I don't know what you're on hold for, but um, it's 323-524-2599. I know what it is. Um, it's, her name is, hold on, Jody Podicker. Um, she has a retreat, a woman's retreat. Uh, it's called togetheratlastretreat.com. August 23rd through 29th in Big Bear. Um, women can come for the whole week or four days or just the weekend. It's a, a sort of spiritual and engaging. Um, again, it's together at lastretreat.com. Um, so if we don't get her, look that up. And um, she sort of explained, it's actually very fairly priced. Um, there are many different segments, but um, uh, look it up. And if it's something that you're interested in, then just do it. Um, I, like I said, I don't know. I don't know what you, where you're on hold, and if they're having a glitch with the system because of the whole outages. I apologize, Jody, but um, please again look at the website, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to attend and see if you're. It's going to be fun. She has some speakers and stuff. It's very spiritual and very woman okay. empowering. Woman empowering with speakers and with stuff. speakers and stuff. All right. I mean, I, I didn't get you. a chance to look at it, but it's right. supposed to be good. Um, but my point is, um. You know, it's nine o'clock now, or almost nine, and I, I just kind of lost track of time because we had two hiccups. So, 
I don't know how long the show was, but anyone who's listening, um, I want to thank you for listening to the hiccups and continuing to, you know, come back and view us and, and not dropping off. And, um, you know, Sean will push it all together and make it right. And it'll be on, you know, um, blah, 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 the YouTube uh, page and, and all these other things. So it's still, I told him to keep the shit in because it's funny. I think it's funny. Uh, two so I, years ago, I'm telling you, two years ago, it came up as a memory. We were in a seven point earthquake and we just kept doing it. So <laughs> to almost two years to the day, it's a spectrum Yay. earthquake. So there we go. <clears throat> it's a Mar Hobbs earthquake. Uh, Mar, I, I want to say thank you so much. Thank you for joining Man, I us. Had, I had a blast. I had a lot of fun. For bringing really out did. the guitar, for showcasing and allowing me to embarrass you with the other That's song. Okay. That's all good. Um, um, I still want to re remember that. Yes, you will. It's okay. You get to pay me back. Right. Um, I do want to come to your studio cause, um, I just want to come to your studio. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. The house is still looking like a, I like, don't care. I like want to sit mess, in your but studio. You, but you can, Hey, it's, it's the, it, it's the one place in the house that actually feels pretty amazing. Well, so, it's a studio and it's, it's music. Studio, How yeah. could it not be? Yeah. So where can people find you? Um, they can find me right now. Uh, you know, I, uh, right now you can find me on Facebook. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. Um, and what's uh, your, uh, what's your handles on Instagram? It's my, on Instagram, it's funky mulata. Ooh, <laughs> that is my, yeah. And I bet you all want to know how Mar got her name. We just found this out. How, what is, what is your real name? Your birth my, name? My real name. It's my mother was very Spanish and, uh, uh, Mar is, is short for Maria del Mar. You know, so if you go to Spain and you say Mar, it's kind of like, you know, instead of saying the whole name, you say, hey, Mar. So it's Maria del Mar. Yeah. Hobbs. There you go. That's very poetic. <laughs> it's that last name always fucks shit up. Maria right? del Mar Hobbs. Yeah, that, that, yeah that's, uh, that, that's my, my, my black daddy from the South, my slave name. That's it. There you go. You know. Thank you so much, right. sweetheart. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I had a blast. Keep I had fun. music. I will. Um, Ronnie, where can they find you? Hi, I'm on Instagram, Ronnie Lowe, and I'm on Clubhouse and Facebook, Ronnie Loiza, and it's just been such a treat to be with all you ladies tonight. Well, thanks Seriously. for joining us again. Ronnie in studio, Mara. Mara. <laughs> Mara. <laughs> not short for anything. It's just Mara. <laughs> uh, Mara Shane on Facebook and MaraShaneArt.com. And... Hold on, pull the shoes out. Oh, well, they're not done they're, yet. They're, look, she's like anyone who wants to order these custom made shoes. Finished. I don't care. Just show right. them. They're fly. They're fly. She's she's is just in they're process, but awesome. I mean, I want you to see what these things really look like, like oh, in the creating process. What size are these? I'm ah. taking them. Seven and I asked her to make me, I asked her to make me something from the either TV or from the eighties. And, um, these are the eighties and they are just oh, shy of not fitting me. So we have to try and it again, not, they're not oh. finished, these but are, they're not finished. They're not painted. They're not, it doesn't matter. This is art in motion. Size, it's, it's, yeah. These are size seven, seven. I want some Betty boop shoes. All right. Well, yeah, they're, yeah. you know what? If you want shoes by Mara, find her on Facebook or find Sex, me. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll, Find baby. me. I'll, I, I end up negotiating partially for her. Um, Durga, my love, thank you for joining us tonight. Yeah, Where What are you doing? You doing any performances in L.A.? What's going on? Uh, not in L.A. Uh, I'm on standby for a show in Sicily. That will be probably my next performance. And then I'll be uh, hopefully doing most. Oh, then I'll be in Holland on September 4th at Pos Pop uh, Festival, and then in the UK, finally doing some Blue Pearl stuff. Woo! Yay. Nice. Are you going to be- Where can I, uh, I'm sorry, sis, where can I find your stuff? Are you on uh, YouTube or? Yeah. Okay. Durga Diva is my channel. All right, channel. okay. And uh, on Facebook, Durga McBroom on my personal and my fan page, and I have a bunch of other aliases because Facebook don't like me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> She's very political real. and outspoken and real. Right Cheryl Murphy, where can people find you? Hey, my website is mediumcheryl.com. I'm always on Instagram, Facebook at Medium Cheryl. Yep, and I have some great events coming up July 22nd and August 12th. And Amadeus, Amadeus, Amadeus. Okay, on Facebook, I'm Amadeus, Amadeus. On Instagram, I think I'm just Amadeus. And I'm on a podcast on Monday, I love this guy, uh, called Forgotten History, where we talk much about uh, slavery, civil war, and politics in Georgia. Ooh. 
And what channel or how do they like? Is it like? Um, you can find it on Spotify, uh, iTunes, just every single. I think a bunch of platforms. But I love this guy. I love being on the show. Talking well, history, other stuff I do. That's you. Yep. <laughs> Thank cool. you, everybody. Thank you, Sean, for all the disasters thank you, Sean. and then doing. Um, everyone, thank, thank you again. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting Between the Sheets. You know I love you. Be safe. Be well. Apparently, masks in L.A. County are back on at midnight on Saturday. Oh, fucking yep. joy. <laughs> no, <laughs> true story. Are you um, kidding? Yep, no indoors only, I think. I think yeah. outdoors. It doesn't matter if you're vaccinated or not. Um, in any event, peace, be safe, be well out there, people. I love you. We'll be back in two weeks. Hold on, I have to look at the calendar because I'm like... It's not the 30th. Nope. Nope. In two weeks. No, three weeks. Whatever the hell it is. August 6th is the next day. Friday, August 6th. Joining us in studio will be um, Seppi Shine from West Hollywood. So um, she'll come and join us. Amadeus, hopefully, please be yes. in studio. Durga, will you be, will, are you going to be around on September, on uh, August 6th? Uh, that's the day before I leave, so probably not. Well, maybe I'll you be, will. I will in panic. panic. <laughs> well, everyone, I thank you. All right. Well, things change. You are always welcome here, my friend. You know I love you. Thank you, everybody. Be love safe. You. Be well. And as always, namaste. Thank namaste. you. Namaste. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.